So now that we have our input core set up, we need a place to put it. So where are we going to put it? In our application class. So if you go back to application.h, you'll notice now that I have it inheriting publicly from input core. So you'll want to do that. And then if you scroll down, I've implemented two different uh, events, on exit and on resize, which are two functions that are in here. For whichever events you're going to want to support, you need to overload the input functions in this class. And now we're going to utilize our take input function. So go and open up your application.cpp file. So now if we go up to our run function, we need to create an SDL event structure for use. Then we have our loop right here. And we're going to actually implement our take input, update, and render functions. So for take input, we're going to pass, pass in a pointer to our event structure. Update, we're not going to really do anything. And render, we're not going to do anything either. But later, we shall. So now that we have our take input, update, and render functions called, we need to actually give them some code. Really, the only one we're going to give code is take input. So in take input, what we're going to do is add another while loop. So what this, this is the function I was talking about earlier, SDL pull event. This is what takes events off the queue and keeps things moving, really. Now there's two functions that I want you to know about for this, SDL pull event and SDL wait event. The difference is with SDL pull event, it's going to check for an event. If there's not an event, then it's going to return zero. If there is an event, it's going to return whatever event was returned. So basically, each frame we're going to go through and handle all the different input that happened within that frame. If no input happened, we're going to move on. With SDL wait event, it'll stay there until input happens. So the significance of that is that with SDL wait event, you can't really have things going on in the background. So if, you're, if the user isn't inputting anything, nothing will happen. That's good for use in applications. But when you're gearing more towards games, you probably want to use SDL pull event. SDL pull event can keep things running, so it'll go check for events. If there's no events, then it'll move on and update anything and render anything that needs to be updated and rendered, respectively. But uh, SDL wait event probably does have its uses in applications. I have used it in applications such as a map editor I made a while back, and I really recommend you use that in applications because it will likely decrease uh, CPU usage. So then uh, after we get that event structure, we want to pass it into our on event function, which since we inherited from input core, application now has that. So then it's going to actually call the proper event functions for us. And if you noticed in input core.h, we actually did provide implementations. They just do nothing. That way, you don't have to overload it if you don't want to. But if you don't, then nothing will happen. It'll call the function, and then it'll just nothing will happen. So in update, what you might want to do is have an SDL delay 50 millisecond call. What this does is decrease CPU usage. Later on, we're going to use SDL delay to cap the frame rate, as I said before. But this will make it so we're not using up the CPU for the entire time. OK, and besides that, the real meat here is our new event functions. So we have void application on resize, passing in width and height as parameters. So now what we need to do is implement a new function into our window class to resize it. So what we need to do is open up our window.h and window.cpp class. So in window.h, we need to add a new function called resize. I have it return a boolean because when you reset the size, you have to use SDL set video mode again. And if that fails, then we don't really want to continue the program. So this just takes the same parameters as our event function, but we're going to do something with them in this function. So first we need to reassign the width and height. Then we set up just like an init. So if you look at init, it's the same thing, except we're not changing the bits per pixel or flags. 
So we're going to check to see to make sure the window initialized. If it did, return true. If it didn't, return false. As simple as that. So now in application, we can actually use our function. So what we're going to do is check to make sure the resize was successful. If it was, this if statement is going to break through and the program will continue. If not, it's going to exit. And what happens in our on exit function? Simply, we set mb done to true. So by setting mb done to true, up in our while loop, our while loop is going to break through and end. So back in our main function, since the while loop ends, run ends, the app's going to quit. We're going to delete it, and then we're going to return zero. So now that we have added all that new code, let's go ahead and compile. And now we can run. So right now I don't want to reset the screen size, so I'll just show you the window. So this time we can actually move the window. We can resize it. And I'll resize it real small. See? Then we can also exit and see it closes. Congratulations, you've now implemented events. Next time, we're going to talk about loading in images.